Music is one of the greatest art forms. It allows for expression, creativity, and skill. It inspires, entertains, and can even change the way we look at things. I mean, look back to the 1960s and how much music meant in those years, and it has brought us some truly legendary artists. Like I said, the 60s was huge, and people like the Beatles, Elvis, the Rolling Stones, and the Grateful Dead were on top of the world because of how much they pioneered music. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have half the genres or artists we have now. Thanks, Paul McCartney. Over the years, and still today, there have been so many legendary musical artists with their own styles, fan bases, and personalities. Black Sabbath, Motley Crue, The Sugar Hill Gang, Metallica, Cake, ABBA, Run DMC, Kendrick Lamar, Adele, Kanye West, Huey Lewis in the News, and so many more. Is that like a Huey Lewis on the News joke or something? <laughs> no, Al. Everyone has their favorites, and today, I wanted to share mine. Now, I'm doing this based on personal opinions, so my thoughts probably won't be nearly as well put together and cohesive as my other videos. And while I may be a teenager, I promise Evanescence and Skillet won't be all over the list. Also, I have an insanely eclectic taste, which means I'm into everything, basically. And with all of that aside, let's get into my top 10 musical artists, starting with... I can make orange rhyme with banana. Starting off our list, we have the real Slim Shady himself, Eminem. I don't really have that much to say about Marshall as other people probably do, but I'll do my best. Personally, I find it astonishing just how much he turned his life around after having such an unfortunate childhood and how far he's come since that and his overdose. I know some of his projects, mainly his newer ones, aren't always held in the highest regard, but I found at least one song to like from every album besides Revival. I've always enjoyed the hits like Without Me, Lose Yourself, and Rap God, but only in the past few months have I been listening to tracks like Stan, Cleaning Out My Closet, and When I'm Gone. His flow and catchy beats and the ability to tell stories makes Eminem stand out, and it's pretty clear why he's regarded as one of the best rappers of all time. Also, I really liked the death of Slim Shady, and I might make a video on it. The guy from Creed. That's alright, don't start with me, Leslie. I, I panicked. This is my favorite 60s band. Eric Clapton is one of the best guitarists of all time, and out of all of the groups he's been a part of, this is my favorite, as much as I do love Layla. This band is considered one of the first power trios, and rightfully so, because Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce are great here. And combined with Eric's skill, the band has a really tight sound, which is great, because these guys weren't around for too long, and sometimes it takes some bands a while to refine their sound. Across the two and a half years they played together, Cream made some great albums like Disraeli Gears and Wheels of Fire. And from those, you had classic songs like Sunshine of Your Love, White Room, and Tales of Brave Ulysses. These are songs with great guitar riffs, solos, bass lines, and vocals. I'm sure everybody has heard Sunshine of Your Love before at some point in their life. Of all the cool, innovative rock and roll stuff from this time period, this band is my favorite. And if you're a fan of Eric Clapton, I'd highly recommend checking these guys out. Through the gates of hell! As we may cut away to heaven. Number 8, we have Sabaton. I've had a waning interest in the metal genre, there hasn't really been a specific band I really liked until I found them. When I was younger, I had heard Primo Victoria a few times, but it wasn't until a few years ago that I stumbled across the song The Last Stand from the album of the same name. And after that, I slowly listened to almost every album and single they've released. The English ones, anyway. Most of them are pretty good, with my personal favorites being Careless Rex and The Last Stand. Sabaton had some seriously great things going for them. First of all, how many bands can you think of that focus on history in their music? All of their songs do such a great job of exploring different aspects of war and sheds light on so much history that I didn't know about. Which is awesome, because I love history. Nerd. The guitars are also great. I believe this genre is considered power metal, and I like it, at least with this band. The guitar solos and power chords are awesome, and give a sense of huge scale, especially on songs like The Bismarck and The Winged Hussars. And I gotta talk about Sabaton's most iconic aspect, Joachim Broden. I probably butchered that. This man, while also being a really wholesome dude, is an amazing singer. He has such a captivating voice and can bring so much emotion to the music, like on 1916 or The Ballad of the Bull. I'm eagerly awaiting the album Sabaton is releasing this year, and the only reason they're so low on this list is just because I don't listen to them as frequently as I used to. But still, love these guys. You got the lame! Come on, Cage, you're coming with me! Okay, so because of the recent news, I'm gonna keep this brief. I've always loved Jack Black's humor, and once my mom played tribute for me for the first time, it was a match made in heaven. 
I made an amateur video on Tenacious D for school months ago, and most of that still applies. The rock music is great, and the lyrics are hilarious. It's cool to me how some of their songs can get so dramatic. The Ballad of Hollywood Jack is honestly a really good song in my book, and you of course have stuff like The Metal and Tribute. I think it's truly unfortunate what's happening with the band right now, and the album they were working on probably won't come out, but in the end you always have the old stuff to go back to. Here's hoping that everything surrounding these guys resolves peacefully. Now here we have one of the best rock bands I've ever heard. I love the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They have great songs, a good discography, a tight sound, and enough personality and character that they can fix the Star Wars prequel writing and still be incredible. I mean, these are the guys who made amazing albums like Californication, By The Way, Blood Sugar Sex Magic, and Mother's Milk. And their songs? Oh man. You have obvious hits like Can't Stop, Under the Bridge, Other Side, and Scar Tissue, but then you also have tracks like Good Time Boys, Cabron, Nobody Weird Like Me, Blood Sugar Sex Magic, and honestly, their cover of Highest Ground by Stevie Wonder is really good. All of these songs are backed up by great instrumentals too. Flea is obviously great on the bass, and Anthony Kiedis has some great vocals, but honestly, it's John Frushanti's guitar that sells it for me. He's played so many great riffs and melodies, I mean, everybody and their mom knows the opening to Can't Stop. The Chili Peppers are great, and I'm glad they're still making music today. I'm on my way, I'm making it. Cracking the top 5, Peter Gabriel is somebody that I'm not sure everybody will recognize, so some of this segment is probably going to be shedding light on who he is. So in the 70s, there was a band called Genesis, which Peter sang vocals for. In 1975, Peter left the band to go pursue solo work. He released several self-titled albums and had hit songs like Salisbury Hill, which a lot of people probably have heard once or twice. But in 1986, Peter released So, which contains my favorite song of all time, Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer. This song is perfect and I can listen to it at any time and still love it. The lyrics are great, the horns are great, and the bass line is just so good. Aside from Sledgehammer, the So album has good songs like Big Time, Don't Give Up, and In Your Eyes. Peter's most recent album, I.O., is also pretty good, but it's mostly So that made me like him so much. He's got such a nice style of rock and roll, and I'm glad I stumbled across his music when I did. Thanks again, Mom. And gentlemen, and gentlemen, Dr. Dre. When it comes to the godfathers of rap, you probably think of people like Tupac, but for me, I'll always go back to Dr. Dre. In my younger years, I had obviously heard songs like Still Dre, The Next Episode, and No Diggity, but I had no clue who Dre actually was. So one day, I decided to go see what this guy was all about, and I listened to the 2001 album, and I was blown away. I loved songs like The Watcher, What's the Difference, and Forgot About Dre. And as a whole, the entire album was really well made. And it's not like I stopped there, I looked for any of his music that I could find, and I loved it all. The Chronic, I Need a Doctor, Keep Their Heads Ringing, The GTA Contract, and you know what, the Compton album is also really good. I did also listen to some NWA, and it's pretty decent too. And even if his catalog of music wasn't as good as it is, his producing skills alone earn him a lot of merit. Just to give you a sense of how much he's done, he's produced songs for Tupac and Mary J. Blige, among others, but he's produced entire albums for Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, Kendrick Lamar, The Game, Anderson Pack, and of course, Eminem. He's also the one who taught Easy e how to rap, and he also made the beats headphones. All of that accomplishment, along with also just being a pretty good rapper, puts Dr. Dre in a really high spot for me. I mean, my AirPods are nicknamed the Detox Waiting Room, so if that's not evidence enough, I don't know what is. See, Billy Idol gets it, I don't know why she doesn't get it. Billy Idol is the quintessential rock star, in my opinion. He's got the outfit, the voice, the snarl, all that. I mean, picture a rock star in your head, you got Billy Idol, and I love it. I just really like a lot of Billy's music. Everybody obviously loves White Wedding and Rebel Yell, but some of his songs from the Cyberpunk album aren't too bad either, and honestly, my favorite music of his comes from his newer stuff. The album Kings and Queens of the Underground is really good, and it shares a more somber side of Billy, and the Roadside and Cage EPs are just brilliant and have several great songs. Something I found so surprising is how good the music still is after all these years. Billy is getting old, obviously, but to have stuff that rocks like this 40 years later is pretty cool, and I don't see many artists keep up like that. I'm probably not looking hard enough, but the only ones I can think of off the top of my head are Metallica, Alice Cooper, and Santana. Billy's just got this fist-pumping energy in his music, his lyrics keep you immersed, and the guitar solos, especially in his newer music, are great. Like I said, Billy is what I picture in my head when I think rock star. Who? 
does number two work for? I got into these guys because of my dad, and I'm glad for it, because they are great. I can't exactly explain what I like about them that puts them at number two, but they just have so many good songs, and all of them have such a good flow, I guess. Everything feels so solid and well-made, the restrung albums are probably their best work. Basically, they take one or two of their previous albums and redo the music with a classical orchestra. That's something so unique and cool, the Hilltop Hoods are the only group I know that does it. Like I said, these guys have a lot of good songs. They're probably most famous for Cosby Sweater and the Nosebleed section, but there's also great ones like Rattling the Keys to the Kingdom, Show Business, What a Great Night, and a bunch more. This is a pretty short segment because I don't really have that much more to say about these guys, which may make it confusing as to why I put them at number two, and I'll probably have to give them their own video when I can properly explain that. But I don't really know what else to say. They're my favorite hip hop group, I can listen to them no matter what mood I'm in, and I always enjoy their music. I'm really looking forward to their new album coming this year. Before we talk about the number one on this list, I want to go over the honorable mentions because there are a lot of them. I'll try to be quick, but here we go. ACDC, Johnny Cash, and Santana were all extremely close to making the top 10. I've liked ACDC my whole life, pretty much, and I'd highly recommend both Dirty Deeds and Ball Breaker. Johnny Cash is my favorite country artist and is also an amazing guitarist and singer. And Carlos Santana is one of the best guitarists of all time, who blessed us with smooth, evil ways and Black Magic Woman. Moving on, Michael Jackson is the obvious king of pop and has some amazing songs. Weird Al is a perfect mix of clever and funny. Alice Cooper is another great example of making great music after all these years. His new album, Road, is pretty amazing. Hollow Notes is one of the best pop duos. Rich Girl and Maneater are amazing songs. The Blue Men Group is a very skilled collective, and they're actually the only group I've seen here live. Matchbox 20's newest album is actually really good. Push is a classic, and Rob Thomas's solo project, Something to Be, is great too. The Cranberries are a really solid band, and it's really unfortunate that Dolores O'Riordan passed away. Cage the Elephant has a great discography with some great songs, and The Offspring have too many catchy songs that I know what to do with. You are a sad, strange little man. Okay, I know that was a lot. I'm sorry. Pause the video if you have to. But now, we only have one left. My number one favorite musical artist of all time. If nobody has any objections, I believe I might be of service. Do I really need to justify why David Bowie is so good? He's a brilliant guitarist, and he's made so many iconic songs and albums. Life on Mars, Space Oddity, Ziggy Stardust, Aladdin Sane, Black Star, Let's Dance, Heroes, Ashes to Ashes, and Rebel Rebel. And Under Pressure. Bowie was such a wonderfully creative individual, and he did more than just music too. He was in movies, and he did fashion-related stuff. He was just fantastic. He served as such a unique figure in the music world, from rock and roll with Mick Jagger and Queen, to Christmas music with Bing Crosby. He even worked on the Moana soundtrack. This guy was simply a genius, and it's unfortunate that he passed away when he did, but regardless, I love David Bowie, and he'll forever be considered one of music's most influential figures. So, that was messy, but fun in my opinion. Like I said, I have a very eclectic taste, and my thoughts were way less organized and shortened than my other videos, but I'm glad I decided to share my top artists with you all, and by all means, feel free to voice your top picks in the comments. My next video will probably be another comic book comparison, and then at some point after that, I'll make the video on the death of Slim Shady. But for now, that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for listening to me ramble for several minutes. I hope you found it entertaining. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more of it, and I'll see you nerds later.